as I said in the description, I'm a descendant of indentured slaves and the child and grandchild of anti-apartheid activists. And what I want you to do today is to, and I'm not going to go through a long story, but I want you to ask questions about the food as a metaphor and um, yeah, thinking about South Africa and our place here and our place in the world, like, do you feel seen by the tables that you're at and what is served at the tables? And do you see that there are things missing at the tables in this country, in this city, at any table that you're sitting at? At this table currently, do you feel like you belong? Do you feel seen? Do you feel a part of this space? And um, I think that this is something that I want you to do today is to just ask questions about um, whether you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And like my mom, who is the one of the anti-apartheid activists, will chat just now. <laughs> um, but she has a book called Love and Courage, and using love as a way for political change. Mm -hmm. And to think about how, as a result of being in this system that has hated us, how we don't love each other and love ourselves. And to look at how we can you know, through our food, find ways of loving ourselves and loving each other and building community rather than, and through my table, I'd like to create that space of unity and bring people together and making us feel seen, feel at home, feel a part of something, and hopefully, you know, through this small uh, microcosm that it can, you know, radiate outwards. So... That's mainly what I want you to do is to yeah, ask about those questions of belonging, of being seen, and how things could change like in South Africa and the world. Like on your table right now, the idea is to have different breads and spreads, but also it, because it's like an extension of my home metaphorically, it's not just what's here, there's a tally with a few different South African breads uh, of my choice that I found that there's m obviously a lot more but this makes me think that you know um, there are breads that, are be that belong to different cultures in South Africa but we don't actually find a lot of these things in all the supermarkets in shops at restaurants and what does that say about our country when like you know it, it feels like you should forget about co colonization and apartheid but you know, it's much easier to find um, an Italian restaurant um, and people choose that for uh, their birthdays and celebrations or sushi, having like a you know, Japanese food or something different, not from here. And these words that I want you to look at how, basically this is the overarching topic, how like, through the breads and the spread, uh, white supremacy is baked into us, mm -hmm. into our way of seeing ourselves our way of looking at each other, um, it's how we think, how we see, how we even dream. Like when we think and we use language, like are we actually perpetuating colonial thinking? If you look around at our work here, Tapiwa and my art. Yes, this is the other artist, Tapiwa, who's artist in this gallery here with me. So I'm very proud to have him also as a friend and my wonderful, beautiful assistant today. Husband's to be. And I'm here. All the things. <laughs> and if you look at this work, sometimes you know, the language that people use, it's like, it's playful. It's, therefore, it's uh, childlike. It's, uh, and you use words like playful, childlike, primitive, na you know, naive. And it's like, it, there's also words like sophisticated, you know, if you have a sophisticated color palette of just neutral colors, you know, black and white, and we have this idea of higher and lower. When something is elevated, it means that something is seen as beneath us. When something is, you know, sophisticated, it is obviously, uh, you know, there's something else that you're talking down about. And so it's not just, it's with art, it's with food, it's with our general language about, um, you know, how we, 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 we talk in life in general, even the language of, war and violence in our, you know, like, you're crushing it, you know, <laughs> like, let's, uh, you know, fight those colds and flus and, you know, just the, 
this is the language of war, the language of coloniality and our way we talk, the way we think about our food. Like, is our collective self-esteem low? It's not just, if you think, reflect upon, do I love myself? Do I feel enough? Do I have a high self-esteem and sense of self-worth? It's not necessarily just an individual thing, it's also our collective self-esteem and being in a country and the world where colonial thinking has worked to crush us for hundreds of years and to benefit from us having a low sense of uh, self-worth and low self-esteem. So I want you to like look around at the food here and to think about what is missing from this world and what makes you like not feel like you belong from each table to beyond. Like it's a you know metaphorically look at every area of your life. Like what is invisible, what is visible. So whose story is told, whose story is just not uh, available. Like do you watch Netflix and think, oh, then my friend group isn't on here. You know, like um, but I have a you know these are the, the narratives that are available to us. And to just think like what is missing, what is seen, and do I belong? Do I love myself? <laughs> and that's, on that note, I'm going to introduce my mom, who is going to talk a bit about the politics of food and do a little introductory exercise. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. So I must tell you that because it's a metaphor of my home and my high tea <laughs> idea, it's like these snacks, and then we're also going to have some tin fish curry that you can have with your bread. And then there's also, uh, chicken curry, that, and there's a good sisters, and uh, some uh, milk tart as well. So um, I hope that like, we'll bring them out in due course. And also, if anyone wants to volunteer to make tea, yes. <laughs> 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 